Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about serial mediation, also known as chain mediation, uh, in Amos, the structural equation modeling software program. So before we kind of jump right into the uh, nuts and bolts uh, of Amos and how to test this, uh, I think it's a good idea just to briefly recap some, uh, some things that should kind of help us in how to set up our, our test for serial mediation. So when we're looking for indirect effects or we're testing a mediator itself, well a simple uh, mediation test is usually um, labeled as an A path, a B path, and a C path. Uh, the A path is typically from the independent variable to the mediator and the B path is uh, subsequently from the mediator to the dependent variable and the direct effect from the independent uh, to the dependent variable is typically labeled as the C path. Uh, so just to kind of recap that and then as well the indirect effect is usually just the A path times the B path. Now with serial mediation what we have now is we have uh, a mediator, multiple mediators uh, that are kind of intervening, if you will, from the independent variable to the dependent variable. So with serial mediation, you've got an A path and a B path, but typically you also have what's called a D path, too. D is in dog. Because um, we don't want to use the, uh, the term E. E is usually reserved for error terms, and the C path is going to be used, again, for our kind of direct effect. So... Uh, with simple mediation, you're, you're testing this by multiplying the A path times the B path. With serial mediation, if there's just two mediators, it would be the A path uh, times the D path times the B path in this instance. Uh, and if you had multiple mediators in that process, uh, more than two, it, it follows the same premise in that standpoint that you're just multiplying these paths with uh, you know through the mediators to the dependent variable itself. So how do we test this in Amos? Well this model that I've got right here uh, is a full structural model uh, and just to um, kind of briefly go over this, this came from a restaurant setting and it was looking to understand did the, uh, the adaptive behavior of their servers uh, influence kind of customers uh, feelings of delight and did, did that delight kind of lead to kind of positive word of mouth afterwards uh, and were they more loyal to the uh, the restaurant setting after this. So we've got really two mediators here so I want to understand does adaptive behavior influence throw, flow through delight and positive word of mouth to ultimate to loyalty. So to test this, not only do I have to have these this indirect effect present, but I also have to include the direct effect in there too. I don't want to piecemeal my mediation uh, by looking at just the indirect effect or maybe just the direct effect. So you really need to look with you know the indirect effect in the presence of the direct effect as well, because that'll determine is uh, uh, from partial mediation or full mediation too. Um, so initially, the way we have it right now. The only way that uh, adaptive behaviors influence can go to loyalty is through these two mediators. There's really no other options. And so uh, in that standpoint, we can use the analysis properties um, uh, options in Amos to assess the indirect effect. Now to do that, we're going to go to analysis properties, we'll go to output, uh, and there we're going to uh, choose the indirect, direct, and total effects. And then to actually test mediation, we're going to use a bootstrap. Uh, so a bootstrap is just a resampling of your, of your sample over and over and over again to kind of create kind of a pseudo population. And we're going to get confidence intervals in that to determine if our indirect effect falls within a significant confidence interval. So we're going to perform the bootstrap. Uh, initially, it defaults to 200. That's uh, way too tiny. Let's change that to 5,000. Uh, and then our bias corrected confidence interval, we're going to change that from 90 to 95 because we're kind of significant, we're more oftentimes more uh, interested in 05 significance. And so at this point, we are uh, ready to test this. Again, uh, uh, when I look at the indirect effect from adaptive behavior to loyalty, well, it has no other option but going through both of these to get there. You know, so that standpoint, it's you know a pretty appropriate test and easier using these analysis uh, options through Amos. 
All right, so let's look at our results here. So it's going to take just a second for the bootstrap samples to kind of run all 5,000. Uh, then when it does that, we can kind of jump into the output. So initially, if we look into our estimates here, we're going to see the direct effects. Uh, so adaptive behavior to customer delight was significant. Delight to word of mouth was significant. We see that word of mouth to loyalty uh, was significant. We also see that the direct effect of adaptive behavior directly to loyalty was also significant. So this kind of tells us from the get-go uh, that we, we have uh, possible partial mediation if the indirect effect is, uh, is significant since the direct effect was significant. That means we have partial mediation. So if we go into the estimates uh, and we go down to the matrices, you'll see a tab down here that says indirect effects. And so what we're concerned with is adaptive behavior to loyalty. So our indirect effect through that serial or that chain of mediators, if you will, is 0.05. Now that's the indirect effect, but I just still don't know if it's significant yet. So now we need to go down to the bootstrap confidence intervals. Uh, so now we want to look at the lower bound. So it looks like it's 0.02, and then the upper bound is um, is 0.09. So that confidence interval, that range, does not cross over zero, which means that uh, there's a level of significance down here. And if we go down to the p-values at the bottom, we can see that the p-value is 0.002. So we have a significant indirect effect. Uh, we also have a significant direct effect, so we have partial mediation that has been established. And so this is a pretty uh, kind of straightforward way to, to determine serial mediation. Now here's the issue that you're going to run into with Amos, right? So what if I had another option here uh, that I, I, you know, where adaptive behavior could actually go through another one? We're just going to call this uh, X. Um, oh, let me Put in the text here. Okay, good. Um, and so, what if I had another option that adaptive behavior could actually go to to loyalty? Well, the indirect effects in Amos and its output looks at basically the total indirect effect from adaptive behavior to loyalty. So it would account for this mediation path, but it would also include this mediation path as well. And so it kind of gives me the total indirect effect from adaptive behavior to loyalty. And well, that doesn't help me because I don't necessarily want the total indirect effect. I want to know, does this path down here specifically lead to, um, uh, to, to loyalty? Does it have an indirect effect? I don't necessarily want the total indirect effect. Well, how do I test that then? Well, we can't use the drop down and the kind of the windows functions. We're going to have to use what's called an estimands function now. So the first thing that we have to do to test this through an estimands function is we have to label the paths because we have to tell Amos, give it some kind of indication of what paths we really want you to focus in on and the others we're not concerned about. So to follow kind of our same, um, um, you know, the way we've actually named those paths is so if I look from adaptive behavior to customer delight, and I want to name that path, um, well, that's typically what we call the A path. So down in the regression way, I'm going to put A and then underscore and then path down here. So I've labeled that path A path. And so what I'm going to do with uh, the rest of these is I'm going to label this the, the B path. So typically word of mouth to loyalty or the actual mediator to the final uh, dependent variable is typically referred to as the B path. And then we're going to call this customer delight word of mouth. Uh, the D is in dog path, and then include also the C path here as, uh, as well. So for the sake of time, I went ahead and labeled all of these paths for us. Uh, we've got the uh, independent to the, one of the mediators uh, is listed as the A path, and then we've got the kind of final mediator to the dependent variable listed as the B path, and then the, our uh, mediator to mediator path, we'll just call the D path, D as in dog. And then I've also labeled the C path up here. I don't necessarily have to label that one, um, but I just did to, did so because it was uh, just kind of convenient when you get in the output too. You can label these whatever you want. 
Uh, conventional wisdom calls them A path, B path, and C path, and I usually do so too, just so when I get into the output, it's just easy to note which one of those uh, paths it is in the mediation test, but I can literally call it anything I want, really. Uh, just for sake of clarity, uh, I'm just calling them A path, B path, D path, and C path. So the, the other thing um, that we need to do at this point is to to tell Amos that hey, I only want you to examine the indirect effect through the ones that I'm I have labeled. So I took away our our second mediator here. We just didn't need it. I'm just using it for an example. But um, in, in this instance, we would if I had multiple mediators, I'm going to be telling Amos I only really want you to be concerned about those ones that I have labeled. Well, how do we do this? Well, we have to use kind of the estimands function. So the estimands function is um, a way for us to really kind of code into Amos a little bit and kind of tell it, tell it specifically where to, to analyze the data instead of just using more kind of a drop-down box. So in the uh, estimands function, which is literally at the very bottom left-hand side of the screen, it's literally just a little text box at the very bottom left that says not estimating uh, no estimands, and if you double click into that, um, you can bring up what's called the estimands function right here. And so, what I did is I labeled in here just a simple function uh, in the estimands function. I just called it serial, you can call it whatever you want, but an equal sign. And then after that, I just simply put a path times a d path times the b path. Now, again, you can see all these are underscored paths because you can't have a space in those. Uh, those labels for those paths. So what I'm doing is I'm just simply uh, multiplying all those unstandardized regression weights together. It's always a good idea too to check your syntax, make sure you don't have any uh, issues that was going to prevent it from running. Syntax says it's okay right here, so we're good. You'll also have to kind of uh, save this uh, estimate. And it's a good idea if you ever want to kind of do it again, just to kind of pull it back up, but it's going to ask you to save it before you kind of move forward. So at this point, we want to jump back into the output. Um, the indirect effects, it's checked. We're not going to really need it, though, if there's multiple ones. Because, again, I don't want the total indirect effects. Uh, but you can leave it. It's no, no big deal just to leave it checked. Uh, but we are going to need to still perform a bootstrap. We want it to be 5,000. And we want to have make sure that bias corrected confidence interval is at 95. All right, so everything's kind of good there. So now we're going to go run our analysis. And it's going to take just a second for Amos to run uh, all of those bootstrap samples. So if we jump into the output now, um, you can see from the estimates, we still got our labels right here. Uh, a path, B path, D path, C path. Uh, all of that's going to mirror the, what we just had. Um, but now we want to see uh, just that serial mediation that we set out in our estimands. Uh, and to do that, we're going to jump under the estimates uh, kind of link right here. So instead of going to matrices, we're going to go to scalars this time. And under scalars, we're going to uh, click on something called the user defined estimands. So these are the ones, the estimands that we kind of defined out there. So initially, it's going to present, okay, here's that serial mediation, which I called it. And it gives us the results. So this is the indirect effect right here. And uh, if I want to see the confidence intervals after this is highlighted, I'm going to go down to the very bottom where it says bootstrap confidence. And now it gives me the indirect effect, the lower bound, the upper bound, and the significance. So this is a way for me to, to, in essence, say, yes, there's multiple mediators in my model, but I don't want to look at the total indirect effects. I only want to look at a specific route, if you will, in the mediation. And I'm defining that route, if you will. So in that instance, I said, here's what the A path is, here's the B path, here's the D path, and I noted that in the user estimates. And so... After doing that and running the analysis, well, going up here, not only does it give me the indirect effect, but it'll also give me the upper and lower bound confidence interval uh, and also the p-value, you know, which is really handy because if you've got a very large model and it has multiple possibilities of having an indirect effect, 
is really is your best option is to use kind of the uh, the estimands function then trying to tackle this you know uh, alternatively I've seen people in the past that try to like take away paths to kind of isolate the the indirect effect and you don't want to do that you want to test your model in its full you know conceptualization and then just have Amos look at sp the specific parts that you want to do so if you're looking for more information about uh, mediation, uh, serial mediation, and parallel mediation, even moderated mediation, uh, I'd encourage you to check out my book. Uh, the link's down in the, the description, Applied Structural Equation Modeling Using Amos. And as always, if you saw value in this video, uh, I ask that you would like and subscribe. Um, and I hope you all have a good day, good people.